my name is Sydney. Welcome to Library Scented Life. So today I wanted to talk about some of my favorite recent-ish picture books. Um, so if you didn't know, I actually work with children and I'm very into children's literature, middle grade, um, young adult a little bit, and I really, really love picture books to the point where I have a drawer full of them um, until I get a giant library to put them in. So picture books really hold a special place in my heart. I would read them over and over again and it's how most people get into reading and I find them so crucial for not only um, reading skills but life lessons as well. I wanted to share some just in case you need to buy a gift for someone who has a kid or you want to expand your kid's library. All the books I'm going to talk about today there is a reason I'm mentioning each one so for different moral reasons or different um, lessons that are important for kids to learn and also just for different bonding experiences that I feel like a lot of people um, would enjoy and a lot of kids would benefit from. So most of these books are more recent. I do have, of course, my childhood favorites, but I wanted to focus on books that I've learned about more recently. So the first book I'm going to talk about makes an amazing gift. It is a little bit more on the pricey side, but it makes a lifelong um, gift for the child in your life. So that is called Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, um, 100 Tales of Extraordinary Women. And this is by Elena Favilli and Francesca Cavello. So this book is really interesting, not only for the child but also for the parent um, or anyone whoever's reading it to the child um, so it goes over different women in history in the sciences and the math fields um, women who made history writers it helps to counteract all of the history and um, people we learn about in school who are mostly male dominated so having this at home um, really would help to kind of put that in their life and just make sure they know that, oh, there are also females to do this as well. And the layout of this book is really cool. The illustrations are really nice to look at. Um, kids will enjoy that. And they're just very short one-page summaries of each woman, and it's 100 pages long. There's also Goodnight Stories 2, so there's two versions, and you can also buy them in a set. So you have like 200 stories of extraordinary women. This is probably one of my favorite books to gift um, people who are going to have a kid or people who already have kids. I love this book. So the next book I'm going to talk about is Be Who You Are by Ted, well that's not his name, <laughs> Be Who You Are by Todd Parr. So Todd Parr in general has made a collection of stories that are wonderful and teach really good um, life lessons like loving yourself, being kind to others, accepting yourself and others and your family. And Todd just makes really amazing books um, with really bright illustrations and they're usually just one-liners on each page so they're really um, intriguing for the younger kids. You can read them to kids as young as you want basically. Um, so this one is about just loving who you are and just normalizes differences because differences are normal. So the next book I'm going to talk about is actually not one book, but it's all of Robert Munch's books. I am putting them in this list because they are the ultimate bonding books for reading to children. And I say this because the child wants to hear um, you do the voices, they want to hear everything like that, and sometimes it can be kind of embarrassing um, to add some voices or sound effects to the story, but Robert Munch maps it out very well and to the point where you have to read it and you're forced to it. <laughs> that sounds so bad. You're basically, you are forced to read the sound effects and as the story goes on you find yourself loosening up and getting used to reading to kids. Um, I find it a really good story for people who are nervous to read to kids um, and just to put themselves out there. And the thing is, the kids have much more fun when you do sound effects. I find Robert Munch books really interesting because if you look over them, um, for example, I can look over one and remember how my dad read it to me, like what how he made that sound effect. Because it's written, everyone can do their own version in their family, or the different people in their family read it to them differently, so it just makes for a unique experience for each person they read it with. For example, um, a lot of people's favorite Robert Munch book is Love You Forever, and the song song in it, it doesn't have a set tune. Um, Robert Munch has released a couple of videos um, in some places, you can find them on YouTube where he does sing it, but before that I didn't know how it was sung so I find every parent, every guardian, every family member sings it to a bit of a different tune um, and that's really really cool and a great bonding experience. So the next book I recommend for kids is When Your Llama Needs a Haircut and this is by Susanna Leonard. So the reason I recommend this, um, it's a fun and silly read with really cool intricate pictures um, in terms of brightness and in terms of um, keeping a child's attention. Um, but I also mention this because 
it helps with learning about hygiene. So when your llama needs a haircut is about a llama, it's picture day soon, and this person, this child's llama is really messy and they don't brush their hair. Um, so they're trying to take care of them and figure out what they want and figure out what the llama wants to look like and teaching them about brushing their hair and, and brushing their teeth and taking care of themselves. And they do it in a fun way so the message is hidden, but I read this to one of the kids I work with who was having trouble with brushing her hair. Now whenever she looks in the mirror to brush her hair, she kind of recites the line where the llama's brushing her hair. I don't remember it exactly, but she'll recite it as she's doing it and go through the routine because it was a fun read and she really likes the character so she's associating it with things um, that she didn't like to do before but now that that character did it she wants to do. So the next book I'm going to talk about is called Beautiful Oops. So if you've ever watched a Bob Ross video he says that there are no mistakes they're just happy accidents and that is the whole theme of this book and it's really simplified so it can be read to any child and this can definitely help with kids anxiety so many kids I work with have anxiety about getting things wrong and um, when something does go wrong that's when they escalate if they do have escalation behaviors or they just get really upset and they just start crying because they can't deal with being wrong. This book helps with that and you can read it from a really young age and instill that in them and practice it. There's also a journal that you can buy to go with it that's kind of like um, Wreck This Journal but it's for kids. So Beautiful Oops is full of illustrations with like paint splatters and just like things that weren't meant to be there and the words are kind of saying like a splash of ink can turn into an elephant just things like that um, to teach kids to be creative if they do make a mistake um, or a happy accident and instilling that in them early will give them really good coping skills for later on because they learn to have creative solutions. The next book I'm going to talk about is called Strictly No Elephants. So I haven't actually read this book but I've seen it on Amazon and I put it on my list of books to buy because it looks adorable. So this book is about inclusion and empathy and loving others as they are. And this one I would probably start reading around three or four um, as it does have a bit more words. It's not one-liners depending on if the child can sit through a book or not. Um, every child is different but this book is really cute. It's about a little boy who has a pet elephant and everyone else has cats and dogs and fish. And and he feels left out and his elephant feels left out because the kids don't want to play with them. He feels like they're too different to be with the others and of course there's a happy ending and it's just really sweet overall um, and it does teach kids more about that inclusion and empathy which is so so important and um, that's another thing about reading. Reading anything teaches you empathy so any of these books can teach empathy because they're learning the character's perspective who's in that book um, but ones that focus specifically on it can give kids language and specific words to express these things as opposed to just um, they understand they have the thought but they don't know how to express it so this these books are really great for that. So the next book is Breathe Like a Bear. So Breathe Like a Bear it doesn't present as a story it's like a read one page a night kind of thing and it's really sweet um, it focuses on mindfulness, yoga, stretching, and just calmness. So you can read this before bed and it'll give different breathing exercises. I believe there are some specific yoga poses, um, but they are explained like a kid could understand them. I was looking through it and one of them was, imagine you have a hot chocolate that's too hot and you have to blow on it, take a deep breath and blow on it. So just different things like that um, to calm a child before bed, which I think a parent would find really useful, especially if they have a child that gets up throughout the night or that has nightmares or just has anxiety about going to sleep. This would be really helpful. and. It also teaches a lifelong lesson of mindfulness and breathing exercises, which as we know um, nowadays are just really, really important to know. And the last book I'm going to talk about today is actually one that we all know and love is the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So this is illustrated by Jim Kay and this allows for children of all ages to be immersed in the magical worlds of Harry Potter um, because sometimes when you're reading a novel to a child, it's hard for them to pay attention. Um, they can picture it really well if they can pay attention. So it makes it a much more fun experience for them to see the pages and experience it in multiple different levels of illustrations as well as imagination. So if you know a child um, that you're buying a gift for is a little bit too young to actually listen to a novel, this would be a perfect gift. 
and even if they can listen to the novel, it's just beautiful and I think um, anyone would appreciate this as a gift. Let me know down below what is your most favorite recent picture book um, for children in terms of life lessons or just it's really cute. Let me know down below, I'm always looking for more. And if you'd like another video like this, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'm so excited to see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.